Hey everyone, it's Terrence Branley with Grow IT Partners. And today I have the real pleasure of speaking with Adam Ball from Cloud Revolution. And if you have a contact center, you are going to want to join us for this conversation. Uh, Adam, welcome. Thanks, appreciate it. Glad yeah. to be here. So tell us a little bit about your background. Tell us about uh, Cloud Revolution. Sure. So um, my background has for the last 15, 20 years been in the, the Microsoft Unified Communication space. Uh, kind of changes terms, but UCAS, Unif Unified Communications, is pretty much what most people know it as. Um, it's, you might hear it as Converged Communications now. Cloud Revolution, we have been uh, around for a few years here now, doing staying focused on Microsoft Teams as our core, and then helping uh, organizations uh, with their UCAS uh, solution as Teams, and then branching into other things like Contact Center, um, and how do they kind of bring all of that together so that their employees aren't having to sit in disjointed systems. Um, like I said, we've been um, trying to think back through here, uh, growing quick, quickly, obviously, with the pandemic. Funny funny thing, I always like to say this, um, people always go, you know, what do you attribute to success? And, and when you <laughs> start talking about it, you're like, well, you know, when, when your company helps people go remote and a pandemic strikes, uh, it kind of like feels a, like you like time the market, yeah. you know, you, you, <laughs> and, then, like and then usually, yeah, well, then they usually go, oh, so you're the one who caused it. It's like, no, because um, <laughs> in every good evil henchman case, um, you always have to have the antidote. And I didn't have that. So um, from that standpoint, um, but yeah, no, it's it's just kind of funny from that perspective. Um, but yeah, we've been we've been around here. We've got a great team of folks spread across the U.S. and Canada um, that just really have a passion for helping people um, rethink how they how they do communications. And so that's that's really where we stem out of. Um, most of our staff is made up of folks like myself who are either Microsoft certified masters or MVPs, um, and we've just been doing this for a really really long time. Um, involved in the community. Um, so we just kind of have this, this really tight knit group. So two of the most important parts of any business, right. Are the people and the processes, right. So I'm going to kind of give you a big overview question here, but you know, how does cloud revolution help both of those areas? Um, and what are the types of businesses that are typically will fall into that, you know, category of those types of businesses you can help with their people and the processes? Yeah, so I mean, it kind of goes hand in hand. In all honesty, um, what we've seen over the past number of years—I mean, it, it, this this even goes well before uh, the pandemic. Most organizations were starting to realize telecom and is really more of a commodity, um, and that's why you're seeing a lot of the the systems, whether it's Teams or any of the other uh, providers, the UCAS providers out there, moving towards the cloud. And why companies are really interested in that is ultimately their people know their business really, really well. I, I, I walk into businesses all the time and I'm talking to the telecom team and they understand what the business is trying to accomplish from it. But then they spend a large part of their time doing the commodity tasks of speeds and feeds and taking care of systems, et cetera, versus getting out and helping the business be better at the business because they know it really uh, uniquely. So what we're seeing and what we bring to the table is that ability to help the company um, or, and the organization move away from that on-prem uh, solution uh, that takes up a lot of time for their staff. And what we do is we move that to the cloud where you're no longer doing the administrate, the day-to-day -day administration of the basics, firmware, et cetera. You're really focused as a staff. You're now focused on how does the system create value for the business? How does it work uh, together with the business to achieve the business goals that are necessary? So that's where it really comes back around to both people and process from my perspective is, is that when we come in and help and get that company off of that, that system, their people, we're not there to replace their people. That's not the goal of what we're trying to do. What we're trying to do is empower their people to serve the business better. So you kind of mentioned the on-prem, right? Maybe we can kind of dive into that a little in terms of, you know, because I know that's probably what you guys do is help, you know, businesses move from their, you know, on-site hardware and legacy systems into the cloud. And maybe you can kind of talk a little bit about the, you know, advantages of doing so um, for business. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of interesting as we go along um, every, for a long time, uh, people were like, put everything into the cloud. And uh, and there are some spots where maybe cloud isn't the right fit. 
Um, I think cloud fits really well in the modern workplace because what we can do, especially in the in the UCAS in the communications world, is when you move it into the cloud, now you're not stuck on on based on hardware. It just kind of somebody else's hardware. Let's just be honest. Cloud is really just somebody else's data center. Mm -hmm. um, and so from that perspective, when we do that, now we're able to take advantage of, of new features faster. Um, so as we get there, and I see this not just in UCAS, but I mean, let's just look back. How, what, it was an arms race uh, from 2020 through 2022, 2023 for all of those providers, Microsoft included, of how many features can we put into Teams or, or you know, whether it was Zoom or Ring Central, et cetera. They were just adding features constantly. At C uh, and that was one of the biggest complaints we would get from people is, is I, I'm overwhelmed. How do I how do I get my people to take advantage of it? So that and so that's a balance, right? Of of where it's at. But really, that's the big component in my mind is is that when you go to this, um, whether it's UCAS or CCAS, the the contact center as a service or unified communications as a service, you're able to take advantage of new features more quickly. Um, in the past, we would have to wait until a server update came out. Um, you'd have to make sure everything was aligned and you do these big updates, maybe on a quarterly or semi-annual basis. And, and so you weren't really able to take advantage of new features as quickly as they might be able to. Um, and today now it's, it's features are daily almost. Yeah. And I think I, I, as a you know business owner, I hear the advantage of that is not only the ability to scale, right. And every, that gets talked about a lot, but just the ability to make fixes, right. Because like you had mentioned earlier, uh, you know, employees know the business better, a lot of times the better than us owners and executives. Right. And so the yep. ability to either say, Hey, we need to address this area here, whatever it may be. And maybe you have some success stories and that's kind of what I was going to ask you next, but you know, ways that you can implement a feature uh, much faster based on the feedback that you're getting, you know, from your, from your staff. Yeah. And, and there's, whether it's a feature specific, I mean, I think one of the big things that we've seen is uh, it, it's always the little things. So, I mean, it like, it might not be this, grandiose like mm -hmm. oh my gosh we've been waiting for this feature kind of thing it might be something really really simple that just changes the course of how somebody does their day um, and makes a huge impact to them um, you know we're seeing things like um, coming out at least from the Microsoft perspective and I know every every provider has their own roadmap has their own things um, but Microsoft's bringing out a lot of new features within the phone system the SIP gateway recently has been a huge impact for a lot of customers um, and the reason being is, is they might have had a whole lot of analog I, I always laugh because when we go in you think oh it's 2023 almost 2024 I mean we blinked and you know we always joke about where you know at least from my from my background and growing up, and I'll date myself a little bit. We always <laughs> thought we, you know, the Jetsons weren't that far away, and right. we were going to have flying cars right. and everything. Um, so for all the people who who watched Hanna Barbera <laughs> uh, cartoons as a kid, <laughs> and, um, and, and so, um, but but at the end of the day, we don't have that. We still have a lot of analog going on out there, whether it's uh, an elevator lift phone or in a shop or in some sort of manufacturing warehouse. And that was really preventing people from being able to move to a more mature system uh, that had more features for the rest of their workers. So they were kind of being held back by these, these legacy components. And so when Microsoft brought the SIP gateway around, we were able to see uh, advantages within that of being able to bring analog devices and other, and other devices to, uh, to the solution that weren't there before. And we were having to do some really weird workarounds and, and things like that. So now we have a whole system um, that really doesn't prevent a company that's heavily invested in manufacturing, um, you know, retail, et cetera, where they really need some of those devices that might be more shared, might be analog, et cetera. So I think those are the things that we've seen uh, tremendously take, take hold. What are some good success stories of that, right? I mean, I'm sure you probably have ones in mind, but, you know, maybe give us a yeah. couple of success stories where folks, you know, businesses have kind of implemented some of the either changes or, or uh, you know, or the upgrade or, or going on, on from on-premises to, you know, the cloud. Maybe give me some uh, success yeah. stories. So one of our best, and I always like to talk about this one, um, 
it, because it was just so epic. Um, I'll just be honest. It, it really, and I, ca I can't go into names and all of this, but it was, it was a large company. It was 40,000 seats. Um, and we had, and we were basically um, contracted to help them move from Skype for business on premises to teams um, really specifically. This was, in the early days of, of for them. And it was really just to get them off of the on-prem infrastructure, get them into meetings, et cetera. At the time we went later and went on to help them migrate all of their phones um, to, to teams from, from a um, legacy provider. But the cool part about this one was, is it was just before the pandemic. Um, and so you have to understand. Good timing. I mean, well, it, it the timing is crazy. I mean, honestly, so we, 40,000 users, they, we were coming to the, trying to bring them to teams. We had about a four to six month window that we were trying to get it done in um, to get everything ready and moved over, do all the adoption change management and everything. And I remember we get to January and uh, 2020 and the CIO says, you know what? I, I just don't think we're ready to make this cutover quite yet. And and all of us were like, we're ready, we're ready. And 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 the CIO was like, listen, I, I think we just need a few extra weeks of of adoption change man. Really, it wasn't a technical hurdle, it was a, a people hurdle of of hey, let's continue to work on the people, make sure awareness is ready. And this is all pre-pandemic where because once the pandemic hit, it was all that stuff went out the window right. and just had to pivot, right? And 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 we could talk about that in a minute, but what was interesting was we was what happened was the date that was chosen was Friday the 13th of March 2020 um and when 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 the date was chosen it was funny because there were a bunch of people from Microsoft that were involved because it was such a large customer and everything and they all went yeah that sounds about right like for for this customer they're like this this just sounds like what they would choose and and so we go through this process and if you don't remember uh friday the 13th of march 2020 was pretty much the day the world shut down mm -hmm. i know the night before thursday march 12th we were sitting at dinner when we when we got the uh call from our kids school that said hey we're going to take spring breaks now going to be a two-week spring break and we're not going back to school tomorrow your kids are now on spring break officially um so no school tomorrow and we're going to make spring break a two-week spring break and hope that this all blows over and we all know where that went mm -hmm. But it was crazy because as we were migrating them, because um, we had to go around the world. And so we started at like 4 a.m. to try to catch APAC and then just kind of worked our way around the around the globe. And during the day, Microsoft couldn't explain it. They were just like, oh, we're seeing spikes. Like you, you guys are being throttled because we're just getting. And nobody knew at the time what it was, was the on, the, the start of the hockey stick. The onslaught teams, of everybody the, started of to work migrating. Yeah. yeah, well, and just all these companies saying, oh, we got to get set up oh, kind of thing. Okay. And so they were initially, and so we get them migrated in 24 hours. It goes swimmingly. I think we had two help desk tickets out of 40,000 people. It was phenomenal. Wow. Um, and, uh, and then, Two weeks later, um, their CEO made, makes the comment, we did 60,000 meetings in 24 hours uh, wow. on, on Teams. And to have that kind of, like, yeah, it's 40,000 people. That's like a meeting and a half per person. Like, that's really not that big of, like, when you when you break it down into that kind of it number. It just seems the number seems bigger, right? The 60, it seems huge. I mean, like, most companies would have never thought about saying we did 60,000 online meetings in 24 hours, like in a 24 hour period. And so to me, like that's, that's one of my funnest, uh, most fun stories that, that I get to tell uh, around our success. Because like I said, we had 40,000 users move and we had like two tickets open with the that's help desk. Crazy. I mean, that was, it was incredibly successful. Right. And then, like I said, we went back behind um, and were able to help that organization migrate from a legacy on-prem phone system globally onto Microsoft Teams for their phone system. So super exciting to see what what that impact is doing. And it's and I know that this sounds great because it it's like oh this is this big company and it is and it's phenomenal. But you know on the flip side we get to help a lot of other organizations that aren't 50,000. They may be 500 seats or a thousand seats, et cetera. Um, and we just get to have a lot of fun um, understanding what those organizations are trying to do. And, you know, people look at me and go, what do you mean trying to do? They want to pick up a phone and make a phone call. Um, and the answer to that is yes. Um, but there is a lot more that goes into that and understanding what is the workflows um, that, that are happening. Um, we see really interesting things. Companies do things that when you look back on it, you go, really, that was, that, that's an odd choice. Like, 
you built that. Um, whether it's, uh, you know, it might be compensation plans around how many calls you answer, huh. um, things like that where reports become really important. And so metrics become really important um, around, well, how many calls were, were, did you take during your shift, et cetera, because you might get a bonus based off of that. So huh. um, you have to really understand what what the metrics are. And so it's not just putting a phone on somebody's desk or a headset on on, you know, for somebody to be able to use, but really trying to make that system available for them to work the way they need to work. Huh. What What are some, just along those lines, what are some of the, you know, again, I, I think we've gotten to the point where we just assume, yeah, telephone there, rings pick up, right? But what are some of the types of, um, you know, different processes maybe that you've built in the background or had clients build in the background that are very complex, right? I, and I know I'm, you're, I can already see yeah. the smile. You're probably thinking about a few because, you just, I thought about that. I was like, man, like even from, you know, some of my businesses, I can think of a number of different things that I've asked, you know, our tech folks to do in terms of routing calls. And if this happens, then this, uh, I'd yep. imagine again, you know, we're just a small business, right? Doing, you know, six, seven million a year. But I imagine some of these larger businesses have some very complex, you know, rules, requirements, processes. Absolutely. I mean, we've got we've got health organizations. I know, I could think of one where where we we had to set up a process to uh, or a, a phone um, system process so that calls for the nurses triage station could come in. Um, and there's more than that just coming in. It's like, oh yeah, just pick up the phone. Well, no, because now I got to be able to transfer um, that call out. Um, I need to be able to find people quickly. Like I mentioned, the other uh, other company that built. Uh, compensation plans off of off of their uh, phone system. So how often are people answering calls? What's their availability, et cetera? Um, all of that plays in for them. Um, you know, we've seen universities where it's, hey, we've got to be able to route calls in a specific way um, to, you know, and actually in the university world, it's kind of been interesting because what they're trying to do is figure, figure out how do we automate that as much as possible so that we're not having to go and hire extra people so that the people who are on the calls are are actually really doing unique work that's not easily done via some sort of automated process. Um, working with one, one where it's like, hey, enter your student ID um, and all this other information, and we can pre-authorize you essentially so that when you need your password changed, we'll be able to pre-authorize you. So we're only asking one or two questions. That, that handle time goes from five or six minutes down to two or three, and that becomes tremendous because now from a staffing perspective, they don't have to have, a, you know, they, they might not need to double their staff. They may be able to keep the staff that they have. Um, and, and for universities right now, that's a huge deal. Um, I think they, I think they, even for for any organization, right? That that absolutely. is having to work with, yeah. you know, do more with less type of thing, and especially if we, you know, have a you know more prolonged, you know, economic downturn, you're going to be yeah. expected to do more with less, and so to right. be more efficient. Yep, and I think that's what it really comes down to is is how do, how do we build efficiency in so that the people who are doing the work. Um, are doing work that matters um, and that like I said the commodity stuff we can we can help and I think that's the big thing when 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 customers come and talk to me like oh I've got phone system I'm already good I don't need anything more and what we usually want to talk to them about is is where are you at in the maturity aspect in, in digital maturity yes you have phone system in but are you doing more with that now are you leveraging that to to be able to improve your business process so that your people are doing work that matters versus, you know, I just think of the office space where, you know, you just hear the phone ring and it's the same thing over <laughs> and over and over. And you're like, uh, and I, I actually had um, another one that uh, kind of just pops back in my head from that. I had an organization, they were uh, uh, manufacturing, but, but essentially food goods, food service, okay. and they loved to have live people answering the phones. Mm -hmm. um, live people answering phones for years we did this that was like their mandate we cannot do any sort of auto attendant or anything in there it got to the point where they had to have three people answering the main line at any given time during the business day they had to have three people manning the the, the, phone, the phones yeah. and and most of them were handling two to four calls at a time so three people two to four calls per 
per person being handled. And that was eight to nine hours a day because you would get people calling up saying, hey, I bought this. Like, and they would ask weird questions. I sat in there for days at, uh, you know, uh, overall um, hanging out with them and just understanding what their business process was and what they were dealing with. And they would just get people who would call and ask the most strange questions that had nothing pertaining to their business. And they were expected to answer, you know, try to answer the questions, redirect, whatever. And it was only recently that they, they realized that those people were not productive. Like they were, they were there, but they really weren't even being the liaison that they thought they were. Right. So and we it, ended up shifting them over towards some automation um, for those first calls. Yeah. And, and, you know, ultimately you're trying to have a satisfactory, you yeah. know, result for the client really. And that's probably right. why they thought, Hey, you know, this will be, you know, this is what our clients want, but ultimately, you know, clients, you know, their customers want to get to where they want to get to, to answer their question. And it may not be, you know, one of the three people that they have. Right. So you have right. kind of two things going on there, the inefficiencies totally. of that as well as a lack, you know, it's not the customer satisfaction that you may have thought that you were going to have. Exactly. So what, what are some, you know, obviously we hear a lot about AI. I don't know if there, if it's, you know, gets involved in your, you know, area of line of work, but maybe you can talk about some of the, you know, things that you see coming down the pike in terms of, you know, technology and how you think it will affect, uh, you know, contact centers and, and, you know, the Microsoft team oh. platform and, how that's going yeah. to go. And again, I know that we, we, we don't have a crystal ball in front of us and we're very oh, no, early. I, in I, the this is a great question. Cycle. Yeah, this is a great question because, um, and, and this will kind of date it a little bit, date this episode for you a little bit, just unfortunately, but we just went through Microsoft Ignite last week. So Microsoft had their, their worldwide um, uh, end customer part, uh, conference uh, up in Seattle and everything was about Copilot. Microsoft Copilot this, Microsoft Copilot that. And, you know, it, it's it's going to take the world by storm in in this. And, co and just for everyone, Copilot yeah. is is Microsoft's version of of AI, right? You hear all the different right. names it's, for it. Correct. So it's their it's their really what it is is it's their how how they're connecting the users to AI. So Copilot, it, it really is that. It's my daily Copilot. So I'm sitting here flying my plane, and Copilot's helping me with that, and it has different tasks. Um, one of the most impressive ones that you will see, and I think this will become the de facto standard in, in, uh, is Copilot, as it joins meetings with you, will do note taking and things like that. And so now project managers, program managers, et cetera, they can focus in on the product, like what they're trying to accomplish versus sitting there trying to take notes, um, things like that. I know for me, I'm a terrible note taker. Same. So, so those kinds of things where it's like, oh, well, I'll just give you all the notes. I'll give you everything. I'll give you the key actions and takeaways um, right there. That's low hanging fruit in, in, in most of our worlds, but it's gonna have a massive impact to us. And as we get in there and see what's going on with Copilot, I think that'll be one of the big things. Now. That's that's great on the day to day activities, whether you're on a phone call, like literally if you're on a phone call, it'll sit there and prompt you, you know, different things within from the copilot that's hmm. sitting within the phone call. So, hey, we're, we're noticing this and, or maybe it picked up on something you mentioned and it's like, here, let me tell you about that. And so you've got more information at your fingertips as you go towards the contact center. What I think you'll see is, is you'll see more about that, whether it's interacting with an agent. Um, I've seen a few demos from a few products where, you know, the agents on the phone talking to a to a customer and, and think like your favorite sporting goods store um, where they're really customer centric and they're like trying to help them figure out, you know, how do we solve this customer's problem? Because a lot of these places um, have have changed the game of, yeah, just if you didn't, if the shoes didn't fit, the sleeping bag didn't work, whatever, bring it back, we'll All help right. you um, or the jacket ripped, whatever. Um, and. It was funny because the AI is sitting there coaching the agent through on it. On questions to ask. On questions. Well, not just questions to ask, but hearing like what the what the customer calling in is talking about and saying, oh, well, let me bring this data from CRM into your fingertips. So I'm getting all of the customer data from that customer right now. I'm getting what they bought. Now I can present to you, here are some solutions. 
here are the options. And so the agent just has it at their fingertips, all based on the AI bot listening in. And they're not having to type. They're not having to sit there and kind of go at it um, and search for the data. It's being, it's being brought to them based on the conversation. And so to me is that going back to that's going to help them handle calls faster and provide higher levels of customer service. So you're going to have higher levels of customer satisfaction. Um, so th somebody brought up this the other day. They, they were, we were talking to a customer and they're like, we're really focused on customer satisfaction when they call in and we don't really care about anything else. And I'm like, well, wait, you really got to care about your agent satisfaction. So if the agent has all these tools at their fingertips and you're bringing that data to them, you're making their job easier, they're going to be able to in turn provide better support and, and higher levels of customer satisfaction um, to your customers that way. So yes, you got to make it easy on the front end for the customer, but you got to meet them halfway by making the agent experience amazing as well. Yeah. It's going to be amazing to see how uh, it, it comes into play, right? Uh, Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's going to, it's going to make for a better customer experience. It's going to make a better, you know, a business and employee experience. Uh, mm -hmm. And just to be able to so quickly pull and leverage the data that a business is, is accumulated uh, from helping a number of different, you know, customers from helping that specific customer and putting that in a, you know, an instantaneous uh, availability for that point of contact with the business. It's just going to be incredible. You know? Absolutely. I mean, it, it'll have real impacts to businesses for sure. What do you see as the most significant value that the cloud revolution can, you know, bring to businesses and, and, uh, and like, how do you communicate that, that value proposition to prospective, uh, you know, clients? Yeah, I think the big thing that we we bring to the table is our people. Um, number one, um, above and above and uh, all else, and the reason why I say that is is our people have been there and done that um, from the perspective of we know how how the different solutions work, and we can sit there and think through how how does it need to look like here in with what you're trying to accomplish. And so we've got some amazing people. Um, so I think that's that's first and foremost. Um, secondly, um, the way we do that. Um, we bring it to people in, in ways that are easily consumable. Um, and, and I say that in the ways of, in the past, like we, we've got uh, a solution called Revolution 360. And really what that is, is it's a Teams managed service, but it's more than that in that uh, a lot of customers will come to us and say, hey, I want to get off of system XYZ. doesn't matter what it is. Um, and, but we don't know what we have there. And, and I can't tell you, I mean, it always makes me chuckle. It's like, what do you mean you don't know what you have? And, and legitimately what it is, is it's, they've had the system so long and people, they've had turnover. It wasn't documented, et cetera. We had one customer who was 10,000 seats and they said, I've got like, a, I've got like 900 locations where, where we've got phones at. We have no, no idea what's out there. None, no inventory, no nothing. We have no schematics, no nothing legitimately. And, and in the past, that would be a showstopper for, for a lot of organizations of, well, we got to go through and do the documentation. We have to understand what you have, blah, blah, blah. And then that just slows down the whole process um, from it. And what we've done that's unique with our, uh, Revolution 360 is we include the onboarding. So you sign up for the managed service and we don't have to sit there and scope out what does that migration look like. We just start that process and so it's all included within that um, and so meeting customers within that mindset of where are you at today and how do we make that on ramp to the cloud for your communications easier is what we do maybe it's a that's a good segue to what i was going to ask you too which is you know walking us through the path that a you know a new client would take with you guys um, and maybe you can kind of talk to that and again. I know it would depend on the size, uh, complexity of the organization, but maybe if you can just kind of talk, uh, through the, the, the journey that they'll take from the beginning to, you know, to implementation. Yeah, absolutely. So I think, um, the first, the first way we always like to start is just at least with a conversation. Let's get on the phone, get to know each other, um, and, and figure out, are we the right fit? Um, and 
ultimately what we want to do is then be able to um, forecast for the customer what is this going to look like um, we're going to start in x amount of weeks here's where that goes and this is what you can expect um, we do all, all of our documentation up front we get all of that everybody signs off and approves and we just kind of walk them all the way through what what does that look like um, and then here's what your cutovers will start to look like or here's what your migration path will start to look like uh, so that you can then understand where do, where do you need to either have us help or you need to come in and augment what we're doing because some customers say um, we want you to do a lot of the adoption change management we want you to help us write the communications that are going to go out to our customers and then there's other organizations that say no we've got people that really know that really well they know how to communicate with our employees and our coworkers. you just communicate with them when you're going to do things and they'll handle that um, from that perspective. And I think that's where, where most of these projects really go, whether it's um, one-time projects on into our managed services, it really stems from communication. Um, how well do we communicate what to expect? What are we doing um, at each step? End users don't care what's going on in the background. They just wanna know, when do I start using a headset or when do I go to my new handset, whatever they may be using, what are the changes I need to expect? Um, I don't need to teach somebody what putting a call on hold is. Um, and we all know what that is or transferring a call. We all understand what the functionality is, but you might have somebody who's been using the same device for 15 years. Legitimately, um, we've had cases where uh, an admin assistant hasn't used a different device for eight plus years. And you now have to say, I know that your, your muscle memory is hold is over here or transfers right here and now the new phone has it over here on the left instead of on the right. And so we have to kind of help coach people through that. No different than if, if I'm using Teams every day and I go to a different system, you know, you say, hey, Adam, can we meet on whatever platform? It doesn't make that platform bad just because I don't know where the button is. It just means I don't know where the button is. Yeah, that's kind of goes back to the people and processes part, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, let me ask you this. You had mentioned, and I think we had mentioned a previous conversation we had offline from here, uh, an implementation that you had that I, still blows my mind in terms of the speed of the implementation, right? And you had mentioned, obviously, the large organization that, you know, took four to six months. But, you know, maybe kind of give me some uh, idea of, I, I do want you to tell me that story of the, the light, I call it the lightning fast implementation. But you yeah. know, maybe kind of give us an idea, too, in terms of what's a, what's a typical, and again, I always yeah. preface typical by saying every business is different. I'm sure you'd say the same, right. but yeah. So where, where you're talking about is we had 53,000 seats where we pretty much did it in 12 months. Um, and I know that cuts to the chase on and kind of takes away some of the punchline on it, but it's, <laughs> it's, it's 53,000 seats worldwide. It wasn't like, Hey, we've got 53,000 people sitting in one location, which makes it a lot easier. Uh, but it's 53,000 seats across the globe um, and getting that done in, in essentially 12 months. I mean, I might be off by a couple of weeks, but um, nonetheless, it's, it, it was tremendous. And it took a lot of effort by, from our team and from the customer's team to be able to get that done um, within that. They were able to really bring to the table what, what they needed to bring to the table to make that happen. I go back to customers who have no idea what's out there. That's going to slow you down. Um, but when a customer knows what they've got out there, they've got good communication process, they've already got good documentation, it can go very, very quickly. Um, I would say that's probably on a little atypical. Um, a organization that size, I would have said, was probably 18 months, um, maybe all the way out to 24 months uh, to get all of that done on the long stretch. Um, so we were kind of on the front end of that, uh, which was really nice. I think for most of the customers that we work with, which typically sits between the one and 10,000 seat customer, um, like that's where most of our work happens. Um, that can be anything from six weeks to 12 months, uh, very typically. And it goes, and it really comes down to how much is the customer helping? How much is the customer asking us to do? Um, in many cases, they'll ask us to do all of that and then say, yeah, I can't really give you everything that we said we were going to give you, but we need you to do it with the staff that you're bringing versus us adding staff, which then adds cost and things like that. So um, it just comes down to where do people's budgets come in. Yeah. Well, so. uh, we've covered a lot of ground. Um, yeah. If, uh, you know, a business owner or executive is sitting there and, and wondering if, if, you know, if you can help them with their contact center or, or helping them move from you know, on-premise legacy, you know, infrastructure to, to the cloud, 
you know, what's a, what's a good way for them to uh, get a hold of you? And I would assume the next step, as you kind of mentioned, is, is just to have a conversation because that's the best way to solve problems, right, is to have an initial conversation. But Absolutely. So um, one, I would say this, and I, you know, obviously I'm uh, human here and I'm not in marketing, um, is I missed, I missed just saying the big thing, which is we were Microsoft's partner of the year for the U.S. Oh, uh, wow. for Converge Communications uh, this year. And so uh, if Microsoft's willing to trust us with that title, um, I believe every uh, any customer can trust us with with their communications migration and uh, to Microsoft Teams and uh, to the contact center world in the cloud. Um, from there, how to get a hold of us easy is just you can hit up our website to find out more about us, cloudrevolution.com. Uh, you can email us. There's uh, contact information up there as well. Um, you can hit sales at cloudrevolution.com if you just really want the quick and dirty, um, you can reach out there. Uh, and then obviously you can find Cloud Revolution or myself up on LinkedIn as well, um, very, very easily. Well, good. Well, I'll make sure and put all the links somewhere in this you know, video here as yeah. well as we'll do that. But um, you know, I really appreciate it. I'm really looking forward to having a subsequent conversation, let's say in six months and see how much yeah. uh, the you know, co-pilot and AI portion yeah. has, has, has you know, become involved in, in the business. Um, Absolutely. But, uh, but I'm grateful for your time and uh, look forward to having you on the next time. Awesome. Thanks, Terrence. All right. Thanks, Adam. All right.